Welcome to day three of 12 Days of Dune. So yesterday, we said that today we're gonna look at the source, but after evaluating, that core is actually gonna be ramping up really hard, quickly. So today, instead of looking at the source, we're actually gonna look at the routers. So we're gonna look at the top routing paths that use USDC and wrapped ETH. And in particular, we're only looking at Uniswap V2 Router 2 for this problem. So just to quickly go over the logic, Router 2 is essentially a smart contract that says, all right, if I want to swap between two currencies, what's the easiest way to swap between them? Because you might have a USDC ETH pair and then a USDC Bitcoin pair. And if you don't have a Bitcoin ETH pair, you can't really swap between them unless you have a router. So the router has a bunch of functions to do swaps. We're going to have to union them and then understand how the path parameter works within the router call. And then from there, we're going to check for the sequence of swapping through the USDC ETH pair. Once we have that, we're gonna do one last filter to get the first token and last token of the path and figure out which routing paths use USDC ETH the most. Lastly, on top of that, we're also gonna make it easy for you to find transaction examples for a certain routing path. And this is something that you're gonna use or see a lot in Dune for either finding like examples of transactions or addresses and really make it easier for your dashboard to be used. And to do this, we're going to leverage the cool new query a query feature in Dune SQL. If you know what user generated views are, it's like that, but more powerful. Without further ado, I'm going to let Jackie walk you through the query. So let's first get the token address for this particular USDC wrap teeth that we are looking at, but let's make it a little bit more dynamic. So let's do a CTE first, and then we're gonna get the token zero, and then the token one as well from the factory. So let's go find Uniswap V2 one more time, and let's find the factory, and then let's find the factory events, pair created, Double checking, yep, token zero, token one. Okay, cool, so from this, and then where the pair is equal to a variable, which we are going to create. And then I'm gonna just grab the USDC wrapped ETH address pair as the default for this particular, which we are going to call pair address. Great. Okay, cool. If we do this right now, all it does is to grab the two token pair address for two token address in this pair, which we already know, but this just makes it a little bit more flexible. Okay, so next up, we are going to grab all the swaps router table, which we are again going to put in a CTE. Okay, so what are we doing here? So we're going to Uniswap v2, and then we're looking at router number two, and then we want everything that is regarding swaps. Okay, so these are almost like nine, 10 tables that we see here. So we're gonna union all of these table together, and then we are only going to need the call transaction hash as well as the path. So this is what Andrew was mentioning about this. The path field tells you the path of the token. If you went from Bitcoin to like wrapped ETH to USDC, like this would tell you the token included in it. Okay, so we are going to go back out here a little bit. Okay, so here, number one. Okay, cool. So then we're gonna do a union all. And then I'm gonna do a select from and then number two, okay, number three. Okay, so now you've basically got all the swap router call tables here and then unioning the call transaction hash and the path. We are good to go in terms of the router swaps, but just to check that it works, we can do a mid 10, 100 to just double check. Let me also make this a little smaller here. Okay, okay, so we have stuff. Looks fine. Okay. Okay, cool. Next up, that we're gonna get all the router two swaps that use USDC wrapped ETH in the path, but not as a direct path. Okay, so we're gonna do path non direct. Okay, select from what is this? All router swaps. Okay, all router swaps which we are going to alias as us and then where 
Okay, so basically this path, if we look at it, just to take a quick example, you can see that is it is an array and it can have more than two elements in it. So we're going to grab the cardinality of the path greater than two, because when it's only two tokens, that means it's like a direct swap. But when it's more than two tokens, that means it's a non-direct swap of the coin, right? So first we are going to do cardinality of the s dot path is greater than two. Awesome. Okay, and then next we are going to make sure, oops, two. Next, we are going to make sure that the beginning token and the ending token of this path, either the USDC or the wrapped ETH that we are looking at. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an end and we're going to put the condition in a parenthesis because we need this whatever is inside of this parenthesis to be satisfied but inside of this parenthesis we need an or condition right because we want to match either the zero one token path as well as the one zero token path right but we need this to be an or inside of the end so that's why we put a parenthesis here Okay, so let's get going with this. So we're going to use a function called contains sequence. So this checks for the array, which is s.path. And this checks if it contains a sequence inside of this array. So the order does matter here. We are going to also get the token. So this is why we grab the token address in the beginning. So we're gonna do a pair of tokens here. So we're gonna call this p. Okay, so we're going to do p.token0, and we are going to do p.token1, great, and then this is ended already. Okay, so it's either 0, 1, or 1, 0. So we're going to swap it to be 1, 0, and okay, so now we just need to get the fields that we need. So let's just get both of the token address from the token. And then we, the ultimate goal is we want to find out like what is the actual path. So the actual first token and the last token on this path. So how do we do this? We do path and then we get the position once token as the first token. And then next we get the last position. How do we know it's the last position? We can find the cardinality, so the length of the path, path and then pass it in as a field. So we're doing cardinality path. So if there are three elements in this path, then cardinality will be three. And then as that path three, we'll just get you the last token. Last token. And then we want to also grab the transaction hash. So call transaction hash, just an example for us to take a look later. And then we're gonna just grab the path to take a quick look. Okay, so let's limit 100 again. And then let's just check the non-direct path. How does that look? Select is not right. Uh-huh, forgot to add the as here. Okay. Okay, let's quickly check the result. So let's take a transaction to as an example. And then let's go to Etherscan to quickly check. Okay, this is swapping, it swapped Ether for USDC and then USDC for Lua. So it did contain what we were talking about. Okay, so here, wrapped ETH, USDC, and then Lua token. So let's go back to our here. So full path, we can see that great indeed it has three different tokens matches up with our expectation so more than two has an extra token okay cool so we're good here so let's put the quarry back remove the limit 100 okay so now is the time where we sum up how many times this uh, um path has been used for this particular pair so we're going to have our final table and we are going to do select from our paths non-direct table. We're going to call this PN. Okay, and then also we want to left join on the tokens ERC. We already know this is just to help us make sense of the symbol for this particular token. So tokens.erc20, token zero. Okay, so on what token zero dot contract 
address equals to pn dot first token and we also want to make sure this is the ethereum chain okay cool now we're just matching up the second or the last t k one t k zero okay should probably just copy paste it okay so tokens erc20 tk0 tk1 tk0 contract address first token last token great ethereum blockchain okay cool so let's first get the the path symbol so we are putting the symbol for the first token and the last token together so we're doing a concatenate function and then within this concatenate function we are grabbing the symbol but sometimes symbol may not exist so as usual we are going to apply a coalesce function where we try to grab a token once for the first token's symbol but if that does not exist then we straight up grab the address of that particular token and then next we are going to just make it pretty so backslash right because you always see like usdc backslash wrap teeth that sort of thing so we're going to do that and then next we are going to apply the same coalesce to grab the symbol for the second token or the last token so here we're doing tk1 dot symbol and then instead of first token we're doing last token and then that would be our path symbols okay all right so next we are going to do a count so basically get the count of how many times this path was taken okay and then next we are going to take a example transaction so we are going to use this arbitrary function which just take an arbitrary transaction hash that fits the criteria here right because here once we're done, we are going to group by. So here we're looking at a path. So the token symbol can be like Rapdeeth or Dogecoin, right? So that would be the path. So we're grouping by that particular pair. And then, but we want to pick an example that fits that particular pair as an example to help us take a look at, oh, a swap that goes through USDC Rapdeeth, but it ends up being like Rapdeeth and like Sushi token pair. So we're just, that's why we're doing like arbitrary. So we can get an example of this. Yeah, so we can group by one and then let's, there's sense of pairs in Uniswap v2, right? We probably are not gonna look at all of them. So let's just order by the count, but in a descending order. And then let's just take the top 1000, which is like quite a lot already to examine. So let's run this quickly and take a look. Okay, wonderful. So here we can see that the most popular pair that goes through USDC wrapped ETH is a wrapped ETH and hex and it's been routed through 34,000 more times and this is an example so let's take this example hash go to etherscan and just take a quick look okay we see okay so wrapped e usdc and eventually it arrives at hex okay great but what if we want to so now we're going to show you how we can like save the step of like even going to etherscan like put in your transaction hash you can directly go to etherscan so pretty much what we're doing is we're composing this rel so we're composing the first part and then transaction and then we're putting in the sample transaction hash so you don't have to like click 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 you can just directly click this and it will lead you there so let's do the rate okay so now we can do select from final okay and then we just would we would just keep the path symbol that is what we want and then next we are just gonna keep the times routed and then we're just gonna touch up on the example hash part okay so how do we do this so first there is this existing query already which lists the different block explorers url address for this particular chain so for ethereum we have etherscan for like polygon we have polygon scan so this is the result from this query so basically we just put the chain with its explorer and we're able to refer to this query results as a user defined table pretty much so the way we can do that is by 
calling Corey underscore pretty much. We are gonna left join on this table. Okay, so Corey underscore the Corey ID. So we copy the Corey ID from the side, put it back, and then I'm gonna just call this get chain explorer. Okay, and then we also wanna make sure that Okay, so we're essentially constructing this URL. So to begin with, let's get our concat function ready. So we can start padding different strings that we want. You're gonna just set it up. Okay, so step one, we need to construct an href inside. So we're gonna do a href and then do that. And then we're gonna start our, what is our URL? So we're gonna put like another quotation. This time we're doing like the double quotation. Okay, and then this is where we get started with the URL. So here we already know like get chain explorer. What do we need? We need the explorer field. We need this part. So we're just doing like dot explorer here. So dot uh, explorer. Okay, so next, what are we padding on? Next, we are padding on this, you know, TX part. So that is what we are going to do. So quotation tx back okay so next part we are ready to put this transaction hash in that is easy we already know we are calling this example hash awesome okay so now we're ready to close this href okay so put the quotation back again and then we're gonna finish the double quotation that we just started on this side right so this side we started a double quotation here we're ending the double quotation okay cool and then we're gonna put target as blank and finish off that one as well so this part we are basically composing the this part we are basically composing composing the link okay so next part we are going to say example transaction hash again this is basically what we'll show on this table result on the ui so we're, we just want the example hash to be shown and then lastly we are closing off this a thing that we just started so we are closing off it with a backslash a Okay, and then we already have the parenthesis, closing parenthesis, so we're gonna call it as example hash as our column name. Okay, cool, so let's get it running. All right, so looks like we are missing something in this query. What are we missing? We are actually missing a closing bracket for this beginner bracket, so we're gonna put us there. Yep, okay, so let's run this again. Wonderful. Okay, cool. Let's click into a wrapped Ethan pond. Okay, so USDC, USDC pond. Amazing. Cool. That is the answer for today's quarry. Thanks, Jackie. That was a very, very informative walkthrough. Hopefully we all understand how routing paths work now and how to use the new query a query feature in Dune SQL. For bonus points, try to figure out how much USDC Weath was routed through each pair path, right? So if we routed from Bitcoin to Weath, um, what was the total amount that was routed through USDC Weath? There's many ways to do this. We have a hint inside of the Notion document to try and get you started, but you should end up with an aggregate column of value routed next to the answer that we showed. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at how you identify organic volume by removing bot swaps or arbitrage and MEV from the trading volume. So this is taking the query that we did on the second day and just adding a little bit more analysis to it. Hope to see you tomorrow.